Today we're working on The Sleeping Princess from the book Solos for Young Violists by Barbara Barber. Welcome back. Welcome to the studio. My name is Cassie and I'm a professional violist and teaching artist. So today we're working on The Sleeping Princess. We're going to do a tutorial first and then we'll do an at tempo playthrough. And if you'd like to skip ahead to that, just check in the comments below because I do put timestamps there. So first for our tutorial, we're going to go measure by measure, so it would be useful to have a pencil out to mark stuff, and you can stop the video if you need to, mark stuff, and then come right back. So on the very first measure, I want to make sure that we know what our key signature is. We've got one flat, B flat, which means on the A string our default setting is low to, D string default setting is low to, G string default setting is low to, and C string it's a high to. So mostly low twos in this one. Um, the mezzo P, MP means mezzo piano at the beginning, and espressivo means we're going to be using um, both speed, placement, and weight to determine the expressive nature of the piece, and also vibrato if you've got it. If you're not quite sure how to do vibrato, I'm going to put a link below too to the video that I did on vibrato. So starting at the beginning, we want to make sure that not every measure uses the same amount of bow. It can start to feel a little bit seasick if we do that, so I'm going to demonstrate what that looks like. We don't want to see this. Full bow. <laughs> It's boring and it makes the sound feel like a little bit like we're at C. We don't want that at all. So instead of starting at the frog for the very first note, I'm going to start in the middle. I'm going to use half a bow. Then I'm going to use a little bit more bow because there's a crescendo here. And I'm going to stay at the tip to finish the phrase off. Back to the tip. A lot more bow because we've got a crescendo here. Then stay at the tip. Reset at the middle. Crescendo, a little bit more bow. Stay at the tip. More bow. And then finish the phrase closer to the tip. Same idea at B, we want to make sure we're not kind of seesawing back and forth with our bow. So we're going to again start in the middle or reset our bow to the middle for this next phrase. A lot of bow for our crescendo. Accent. Stay at the tip. You can kind of reset in the air, so I'm hovering very, very close to the string, so I have a little bit more bow to use for that next mezzo forte. Shifting up to third position here. Full bow. First position. Third position. So I'm going to stay in third position to start this. One, low two, then shift using that open string. And then this is just like the beginning at rehearsal C. Same thing as the beginning. Same phrasing, same ideas with the bow distribution. Um, I'm yelling out a lot of fingerings really rapid fire here. If you'd like my fingerings and any of the markings that I've put in my own part, check out Patreon below. I put all of my stuff there, extra tidbits on how to practice. So if you're interested in joining that community, just check down below for that. So at rehearsal C, it's the same idea. Let's just go through it. We're going to be in the middle of the bow. A little bit more bow. Stay at the tip. More bow for the crescendo. Now, I've just gotten to measure 48, and we want to talk about this rhythm. We've got a quarter note that's tied to the start of a triplet. So in that quarter note, I'm going to start thinking triplet. So what I'm thinking there is triple lit triple lit on that last lit part is when i change to the f so i'm subdividing or making into smaller parts that first c triple lit triple lit. if you do that subdivision in your head your rhythm is always going to be correct if you're just kind of guessing at it it's probably going to end up sounding like an eighth note versus a triplet and i know it's a minute difference but it still matters that's what the composer wrote so we should honor that Continuing on in measure 49, same idea. We're in the middle of the bow. A little more bow. Stay at the tip. More bow. Continuing on in the next page, at 
at rehearsal D, we're starting in first position, but then shifting to third. First position. For measures 61 through 63, we want to keep the subdivision of a triplet in our head. And I just say triplet, triplet. You could say one and a two and a if that helps you. Um, but for whatever reason, triplet just makes more sense to me. So maybe that works for you too. Same idea here for, I'm starting in measure 61 for that bow distribution. We don't want to use a full bow for all of that because it gets seasicky. So we're going to plan that. So I'm using a little bit less bow in 61. Start in first position and shift to two. First position, full bow. We just got to measure 71. Now here, the, the printed fingering on the top of the notes is indicating second position. If you've never shifted to second position, that just means where your two usually goes, you're gonna replace that with your one. So I ended up here on an A. And the shift that I'm doing is to B, or where my two would usually go. And then I'm going to plot my three. So let's practice that a few times. I'm going to start on my one, shift to two, where my two usually goes, and then plop three. You can either check this with a tuner or your open string D, which is the same exact note. So again, I'm starting in measure 71 on an up bow, shifting to second position. Staying in position until I see that harmonic, which we talked about in the previous video. This is harmonic finger weight just for that one note. Back to first position. Low four, half position, low one, and then I do a low two. And then rehearsal E is just like the beginning again. We've talked about this. Stay at the tip. Triple it, triple it. High two, low two. Now we're shifting to third position. So my one is aiming for C natural here. When you get to third position, because we've got an E flat, it's a low three, so that will touch your two. And then we've also got a C sharp, so that's going to touch your two as well. So all fingers touch when you shift up there. Next measure is measure 87, and I'm going to use that open D to shift back to first position. Echo. Shift to third position and use your full bow. First position. shift there is it's for expressive reasons really you could just stay in first position that's totally fine but it's kind of nice when we've got a one we can do a little expressive slide up to third position and change the timbre or the tone color of that second a there so again totally optional up to you if you want to do that shift or not continuing on measure 99 we've got a rest third position First position. Slide your one, low two, high two. Diminuendo. Now here we've got a grace note. That tiny note that's printed there is called a grace note and it's gonna happen right before the beat. So if I'm counting three measures from the end in my head, I'm thinking one and two and one. So the C should happen on beat one. The grace note A happens right before that. And then we've got dashes over those two C's, so that means you need to stop your bow, and really you could, you're just gonna pulse with your pointer finger, so it's C, C to finish that off. Pulse. And we've got a fermata. A 
at the end, which means I need to hold that note for at least two beats, but really for however long after two beats I'd like. Don't go crazy and hold it for a million beats, just two beats plus. Now we're ready for our playthrough. I'm gonna count to two twice and we'll begin. And my metronome is set to 60. It's just a little bit lower than the indicated tempo marking. One, two, ready, go. for joining me today. I hope you found this video useful. If there's anything I didn't cover that you still have a question about, post it in the comments below. I really enjoy trying to help from afar. And again, thank you for joining me and happy practicing!